Hello guys, in this video tutorial we will discuss about principle of gel electrophoresis. There are many techniques and types of gel electrophoresis and each of these has its own objectives. So we will discuss in general what are the principles behind of them. So let's start. The gel electrophoresis term describes the migration of charged molecules from the negative side to the positive side. So we have a cathode at one end and anode at the other end. And in between we have a porous gel. Also we use appropriate buffer to create a charge gradient upon the electric current. The sample is injected in this system to be migrated from negative side to the positive side. We have two types of gels are used commonly in gel electrophoresis, agarose gel and polyacrylamide gel. In terms of toxicity, agarose gel is considered non-toxic. Whereas polyacrylamide gels and powders are hazard. From the molecular complexity aspect, the agarose gel is made up of different sized molecules and shows large pores, about 100 to 500 nanometer in diameter. On the other hand, polyacrylamide gel, one large molecule, and it has a smaller pore size from 10 to 200 nanometer in diameter. This is make the agarose gel is more appropriate for larger molecules like DNA, which has a, a greater size. And polyacrylamide more convenient for proteins because it's a provide good resolution and a great separation. Polyacrylamide gel also can be used for DNA in some techniques. Agarose gel is poured horizontally and polyacrylamide gel is poured vertically. This is bring us to the next concept which is what is the difference between the vertical and horizontal gel electrophoresis. In horizontal gel electrophoresis, the gel is uh, made up of one gel concentration, one pH value, and immersed totally in the running buffer. Then the sample is subjected to migrate from the negative side towards the positive side. On the other hand, the vertical electrophoresis shows some differences. It enables us to make two different gels in terms of pH and gel concentration. This is known as discontinuous gel electrophoresis, whereas horizontal gel electrophoresis always shows the continuous gel electrophoresis system. Also, vertical electrophoresis enable us to use two separated buffer chambers. This ensures that the buffer exclusively flows through the gel. This in turn provides a higher separation and improve the resolution of separation. Generally, the first gel is used for stacking and the second gel which is higher in concentration is used for separation improve the separation process the separation of biomacromolecules depends on different properties one of these is charge so we know the negatively charged migrate from negative side towards the positive side so molecules like dna or rna which are already charged due to the phosphorus group migrate automatically towards the cathode but this is not the case in the protein electrophoresis all we know that the protein are made up of a composition of residues which are negatively charged and positively charged and obviously the migration of a protein depends on its composition and the pH values in the surrounding environment so to overcome this problem we might use SDS detergent, which bind to the polypeptide chain, linearize it, and give, gives it negative charge, which is facilitate its migration through the gel. The other two properties are the shape and size. In terms of size, the larger macromolecule migrates slower than the bigger one. The shape also plays a critical role in gel electrophoresis. For example, DNA is slower than RNA because RNA is single-stranded, so it's easier to penetrate through the gel. On the other hand, 
shape is significant also for protein electrophoresis. Fibrous proteins migrate faster than globular one, which gets entangled in the gel matrix. So, how to determine the velocity of charged molecule in the gel? There is equation for that. In this equation, V is the velocity of the migrated molecule. E is the applied electric field. Q is the net charge of molecule. And F is the frictional coefficient, which is related to the size and shape. And usually, we, we trade with this concept in terms of electrophoric mobility. Notice it's a ratio between the net charge of molecule and its frictional coefficient. So the electrophoric mobility is proportional to charge to mass ratio, or what it's called charge density. How to read the results? The interpretation of gel results vary from technique to another. But there are some outlines in general that we will discuss about. So we always use a ladder or a marker, which is made up of many nucleic acid fragments or polypeptides that are known in molecular weight. This is help us to determine the molecular weight of our unknown sample. It also might help us to determine the identity of a protein in some cases. The density of the band indicates to its concentration, but it, it gives us more relative scale than, but not quantitative value. Also, some samples show the smear due to the breakdown of the polymer during the previous procedures. My personal advice to you is to think about gel electrophoresis as a mirror and whatever other modifications or manipulations on the molecular level as a makeup. So we go for a gel electrophoresis many times to discover the quantity of the, our molecule, whether is there a contamination, and to ensure that the last step is done successfully. This was everything and thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe the channel.